Hey everyone and welcome back. Before we begin here today, please make sure that you like and subscribe because it really does help us out over here. And it also really helps us reach others in need of assistance with these topics. So the topic of this video, we're going to be discussing statics, equilibrium of rigid bodies, and we're going to be finding reactions. So we're going to be using this little cart setup here on the left side. And what we have going on is that we have this loading car is at rest on a track forming a 25 degree angle with the vertical. The weight of this car is 5.5 kips or 5,500 pounds, and it's applied here at point G with a distance shown away from the track. The car is held by a cable attached 24 inches from the track, so you have a cable up here, and it's asking to determine the tension in the cable and the reaction at the pair of wheels that contact the track. So we have three things we have to determine here. And I'm not going to draw a free body diagram for this one. I'm just going to draw on my picture here because there's a lot going on here. Um, since everything is at an angle, what I'm going to do is I am going to make my X and Y axis at an angle such that the Y axis aligns with this uh, track and the X axis will be perpendicular to that. So what I have to find is the tension in this cable up here. And I'm going to have to find the reactions for each of these wheels. Now, these wheels are rollers, and rollers can only have reactions in one direction. And it's always going to be perpendicular to the surface it acts on. So the surface is spanning in the Y direction, so the wheels cannot go through that track. Thus, the reactions have to be in my slanted X direction, and they're going to be pushing in that direction since the wheels are not grabbing onto the track that we know of right now. And then the 5,500 pounds will be acting in gravity's direction, which is downward. I'm just going to put that as 5.5 kips. And that's going to be acting at 25 degrees as such off of the vertical. So that is vertical. My y-axis is 25 degrees off that. So using equilibrium, we are going to find our unknowns of the cable forces and our two reactions here, which I'm just going to call this one reaction B and this one reaction F just for the back wheels and then the front wheels. You can label them whatever you want as long as you stay consistent through the problem. So utilizing equilibrium to solve for our reactions and our cable tension force, we can use three equations for a 2D system here. We can sum forces in the X direction have to be zero, sum forces in the Y direction and they have to be zero, and then summing moments about a point have to be zero for everything to be in equilibrium. So which one do you do first? Well, really, there's not really a correct answer for that. It just depends upon which one you want to start first. And if you get stuck with a certain equation with too many unknowns and you can't solve with it, well, you just go to another equilibrium equation and see if you can solve for anything there. But looking at this problem, we have two unknowns in our x direction, and we have one unknown in our y. So I'm going to start with the y and try to get that tension force. So I'm gonna take that direction as my positive Y direction. And I have my assumed tension force in that upward direction, so it's positive. And then the only other force that we will have in this Y direction has to deal with the weight of the cart because F and B are both in the X direction. So I'm gonna break this force of 5.5 kips up into its components here, which is, and the y direction for that one, and then the x direction for that one. So this y direction, which I'm calling y, is 5.5 kips, and that is going to be cosine of 25 because the angle's off of that direction. And this one up here will be 5.5 times the sine of 25 because the angle is not off that direction, it's opposite. So by breaking it up into its components, I can just remove all this information right here because I have it what I have it written in blue. Alrighty, let's switch back over to red. So the 5.5 sines of 25, yeah, that's in the X, don't include it in the Y axis. And then I have minus 5.5 cosines of 25 is equal to zero. So that's a pretty simplistic equation, which T is just 5.5 cosines of 25. And it comes out to be a positive 4.98 kips. Can't be a positive number, so I know my original arrow direction is correct.
If it was a negative number, that means my arrow is in the opposite direction, which really wouldn't mean much because it needs to be in tension because it's a cable. So there's one of my unknowns solved. Now I just have two more, B and F. Well, if you were to sum forces in the X direction, you get a little stuck because you have an unknown B force and unknown F force. Ugh, can't really solve for those two in one single equation. And if you're not realizing that, let's just see what happens if I write it anyways. What would be the next step? So let's just go ahead and write the X equation, even though we won't be able to solve for anything yet. So I'm going to take this direction as positive. So that means that B and F are assumed in that direction. So they are positive. The T is in a Y and this cosine of 25 times 5.5 is also in the Y. This is the only other X force that I have. And it's going in the opposite direction that I said is positive. So it's minus 5.5 sines of 25 equal to zero. So as you can see, we have two unknowns here. Can't solve for either one just yet utilizing the X equation. Well, we've used this one. We've used this one. We still have our moment equation that we can use. And the moment equation can be utilized at multiple different points. Just depends on which one you want to use. Well, typically when using moment to find reactions, you want to use moment at one of the unknown reaction points. Because once you use moment or you're summing moments about that point, the reaction that goes through that point is not included because its perpendicular distance is zero. So let's just go ahead and we'll sum moments at, let's say, point B. It could be either B or F, doesn't matter, or you can sum it anywhere else you want. I'm going to take counterclockwise forces as positive, clockwise as negative. And let's just go ahead and use some of our forces that we have. So T, T has a perpendicular distance to so drop it down here to B of 24 inches, and it will be rotating counterclockwise about point B. So it is positive 4.98 kips times 24 inches. And then... We are going to have B goes right through it, so don't include it. Then we have force F, which is actually rotating counterclockwise as well around point B. So plus F times its perpendicular distance to get it over to B, which is 25 plus 25, which gives us 50 inches. And then we have our two applied forces here. Well, let's start with the, the sine one first, since I've got my cursor on it. So we have 5.5. Sines of 25 runs right through here. Its perpendicular distance is 25 inches, and it will be rotating clockwise about point B. So this will be minus 5.5 times the sine of 25 times my distance of 25 inches. And then I also have my cosine of 25 version right here. And the same thing again, it will be rotating clockwise about point B. So minus 5.5 cosines of 25 times its perpendicular distance to get it over to B, which is 30 inches. And that's all I have for my moment equation. So as you can see in this moment equation, the only unknown that I have is F. So I can rearrange and I can solve for F. And once you do that, F pops out to be 1.76 kips, came out to be a positive number. So I know that my originally assumed arrow direction is the correct one. Okay, well, with F known, what I can do is I can take this and come back to my X equation and plug it back in there. So once I do that from my X equation here, I'm going to have B plus 1.76 kips minus off 5.5 sines of 25 is equal to zero. Well, B is the only unknown in here, so I can rearrange and solve. And that gives me 0 0.56 kips. Came out to be positive, so I know that arrow direction that I drew at the beginning is the correct one. So those are all my answers. I have T up here. I have F right here and I have B right here. Well, with equilibrium problems and with reaction problems, definitely, 
there is a way to check your answers to make sure that you didn't screw up something somewhere. And what you can do is that you can utilize moment again, but summing moments about the other reaction point. So for this one, we summed about point B. Well, sum about point F here and see if everything cancels out to zero or very, very close to zero. It may not be exactly zero due to rounding. So let's go ahead and do that equation real quick. And we're gonna do a check here. So checking by summing moments about point F and everything would have to be equal to zero. Well, what we're gonna have is the same portion here from our cable of 4.98 kips times 24 inches. And then I'm going to have minus my B4 since it is rotating clockwise about point F, which is 0 0.56 times 50 inches. And then I'm going to have my 5.5 sines of 25, which is rotating counterclockwise. So it will be plus 5.5 sines of 25 times a distance of 25 inches. And then this 5.5 cosines of 25 will be rotating clockwise about point F. So that is minus 5.5 cosines of 25 times my distance of 30 inches. And that in fact does pop out to be 0, 0.0. So my check works out. So that means that I didn't screw up a number anywhere. And if you are not 100% sure that that check is correct, you can sum moments at a different point and see if everything still works out. So I hope this video was helpful. And if you wanna see more problems solved in this variety, please check out the other videos on our channel as we're trying to upload daily. Also, if you haven't done so already, please make sure that you like this video, leave a positive comment below and subscribe to the channel because it does help us out. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day.